So that kind of dovetails to, to a bone I have to pick mm-hmm. with you people. Do tell. You quantum people. I'm in conversation with Kip Thorne, and I verified, because I'd read this, and but he's the man, and I said, you have all this apparatus, four meter, four kilometer long beam that reflects and they recombine. You look at a phase shift that, and look at a jiggle, and I said, how big is that jiggle? How, how much did this apparatus move by virtue of this wave passing across? And it is the width of 1 20th the diameter of a proton. <laughs> when it's cold, when it's <laughs> nice outside. No, that's too big. Too big? <laughs> wait, wait, so, so, all right. So, so, so let's just speak more broadly. A fraction the diameter of a nucleon of an atom, okay? A thousandth. Of, of, okay. So you want to make sure nothing else is responsible for what you're about to measure. Otherwise, you're measuring the wrong thing. And when I visited, they were telling me if somebody's walking down the street a mile away, those vibrations can be detected in that. That was exactly how they described it. Mm-hmm. But they, they see all vibrations. So they have to isolate the experiment from anything that could be happening from the outside. Okay? So then you isolate it. And then you put it in a vacuum so that air particles are not bumping into it. So now it's there. But then it is at a temperature. It's not at absolute zero. So at any temperature, all everything is vibrating. And even if you tamp that down, there's always a quantum uncertainty about the position of a particle. Heisenberg told us this, okay? So you, if you want to know exactly what a particle is doing, there's an uncertainty to that. So how are you making measurements that are smaller than the quantum uncertainty allows? And I, we, we had this conversation, and Kip Thorne said, well, we did blah, 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 and we did this. And in that way, we cheated the quantum laws. And I think, no, no! That's <laughs> up, up. Then it's not a law if it bends at your will. So what was he talking about? Yeah, we do that. No, no, no! <laughs> That's not an answer! <laughs> So this is, this is like invasion of the body snatchers. Yes, he's one of us. <laughs> I was thinking of like one of us. One we, we, of us. we both can bend the rules of quantum <laughs> physics. So, okay, for those of you who have such powers, please explain to me. Yeah. It, it, like in its plainest English as you can. Yeah, so let me, let me, I, I can try to do that. So what quantum mechanics tells us is that if you measure two particular properties of a particle, and in, 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 in one example would be the energy of, let's talk about photons, because it turns out in LIGO at the moment, we're limited by the quantum mechanics of the light. The quantum mechanics of the mirror isn't yet a problem because the mirrors are still moving more than their quantum properties would allow. Okay, So let's, let's talk about the light. So um, the quantization of the light says the light has two properties. Light's made up of photons. And if I want to make a measurement of that, I want to know two things about it. What was the energy of the photons that I'm measuring? And when did they arrive on my detector? And you can't know those two things at the same time with infinite precision. With perfect knowledge. Exactly, with perfect knowledge. But you can know one of those properties very, very well if you allow the other one to be very unknown. That quantum mechanics allows you to do. And that's the trick we play. So if we are interested, as we are in our measurement, measuring the phase of the light wave. The phase would be because you have two light beams. Right. And you have to see how they match up. That's right. Because if they match up perfectly, nothing happened to one relative to the other. Right. Gotcha. But if, if, if a wave washes over, then one jiggles a little differently and you will, the waves don't match up. The, 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 you'll see the... Yeah, okay. So right. Go, so That's go. exactly right. So say if you're interested in, in measuring the phase, then what you can do is you can create light with properties where you let the amplitude or the energy of, of, of the wave be very unknown, but you've, you've traded, off, traded that off for precision in the phase. And we have learned how to make instruments that can do that. Damn. So they're instruments that increase uncertainty. They, in, one, they do. in one variable. Uh, that's Ele- right. 
And, and reduce it in the other variable. And that's really important. If you were reducing the, un- the quantum uncertainty in both variables at the same time, you would be violating the laws of physics. But that we are not doing. Okay, you're just bending the laws of physics. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not breaking the laws you know, of No, no, it's a fair, bad loophole. I like this to is say... A, this is a quantum loophole. Admit yeah. it. What? it no. Oh, I like- oh, 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 wow. oh, oh, she got angry. She got a yeah. attitude so on that one. So much for increasing the uncertainty. <laughs> I call it manipulating the laws of quantum physics because we can't violate them. And loopholes are things that are just usually things you haven't thought of. Yeah. Whereas yeah, this okay. we've thought of. We're right. deliberately doing this. And, you know, so that's the kind of thing. So it's not a problem if you don't, know at all what the... So there's a price to pay. Yeah. The price to pay is, look, if you're interested in measuring the phase, and if by accident, because your measurement apparatus isn't perfect, you start to collect a little bit of information about the amplitude, it won't work for you anymore. Because mm. remember, the amplitude is now very, very noisy. Wow. Okay. So, so this is what we do. We reduce the noise in the quantity we're most interested in measuring. We stuff it into the quantity we're trying not to measure. Okay. And then we try to do that as well as we can. Grabbing quantum physics by the horns. Yes. And making it bend to your will. You know, almost. We call it squeezing. We squeeze the light. Ooh. <laughs> Let's get the picture of this now. You have two beams. Yeah. They're at right angles, I presume. Yeah. Yes. And the round trip is is eight kilometers. Is that right? Or, yeah. Okay. And so it takes time for the me- very measured time for the light to do that. This is a single laser beam of light that has been split, correct? It has been split. And not only does it go four kilometers down and come back, there's an added complication, if you will, which is that in that four kilometer span, we have a pair of mirrors that are facing each other. And just like when you put your own head between two mirrors and you see multiple images, yeah. the light is bouncing multiple times between those. It's a way of, of increasing the path length, if you will. All right. So, and so it bounces, in our case, in LIGO's case, about 100 times. Okay. So, so, and, but then it has to come back through to reconjo- to, re- to recombine. Recombine, yes. Okay, so you have your magic ways that you... It goes up and back mm-hmm. 100 times. Mm-hmm. Then at some point, the light has to come back through and not mm-hmm. reflect back. Correct. And then you compare the waves of from, the light. From the two, two, okay. the two arms, yeah. So that's the shift. So how much different would one wave have to be from the other to be the gravitational wave, to, to be the effect of the gravitational wave? Yeah, so so the, the way that you can think of it is that the output of our, our instrument we're measuring, you think of the light as two sine waves, one from each arm, and we arrange the, the distances such that the two light waves cancel. So the peak of one sits on the trough of the other, and in the ideal case, you would see no light, zero, oh. right? And then if one arm is slightly different in, in length than the other arm, then they don't perfectly cancel, and now some light sort of trickles ooh, out. Ooh, brilliant. And, right. Exactly. I should get a Nobel Prize for that. That's pretty they, good. They already yeah. did. <laughs> <laughs> You're tied with Einstein. <laughs> tied. <laughs> so it's always better to see a signal where there isn't otherwise a signal right. than to measure the difference between two large signals. Yeah, if you try to measure a tiny difference in a big number, yeah, it's it, really hard to it's measure. It's very hard. But you start and, with something and, that's and very close prone to... error-prone, too. Right. Yes, yes. You start with something that's very close to zero, and now you get anything, you got something. Wow. So that's what we do.